greetings in the name of the our Father in Jesus' name. May the Holy Spirit guide you and lead you to the kingdom of God in Jesus Christ. First of all, I am very happy to minister to you right now because we all need the truth to guide us eternally. That I meant to say is our life is not by our own, but in the house of God. So I wanted to um, minister to you today um, I'm going to go with a passage which I have with me, um, the David prayer of praise. I dislocated in the first chronicle chapter 29, verse 10 to verse 19. And I will read through the New Living Translation this time. I usually um, uh, read different translations within in a different uh, diagram. But today, I wanted to read the NLT. So um, let me start from verse 10. Then David praised the Lord in the presence of the whole assembly. This is what he said. O Lord, the God of our ancestor Israel, may you be praised forever and ever. Verse 11. Yours, O Lord, is the greatness, the power, the glory, the victory, and the majesty. Everything in the heavens and on earth is yours. O Lord, and this is your kingdom, we adore you as the one who is over all things. Verse 12. Wealth and honor come from you alone, for you rule over everything. Power and might are in your hand, and at your discretion people are made great and given strength. Verse 13. O oh, our God, we thank you and praise your glorious name. Verse 14. But who, who am I and who are my people that we could give anything to you? Everything we have has come from you and we give you only what you first gave us. Verse 15. We are here for only a moment visitors and strangers in the land as our ancestors were before us. Our days on earth are like a passing shadow, gone so soon without a trace. Verse 16, O Lord our God, even this material we have gathered to build a temple to honor your holy name comes from you. It all belongs to you. Verse 17. I know, my God, that you examine our heart and rejoice when you find integrity there. You know I have done all this with, God, all this with good motives, and I have watched your people offer their gift willingly and joyously. Verse 18. O Lord, the God of our ancestors, Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, make your people always want to obey you. See to it that their love for you never changes. Verse 19. Give my son Solomon the wholehearted desire to obey all your commands, laws, and decree, and to do everything necessary to build this temple for which I have made this preparation. I want to focus on the um, um, uh, what David, the King David said in the, um, verse 
Verse 13. Our God, we thank you and praise your glorious name. Verse 14. But who am I and who are my people that we could give anything to you? Everything we have has come from you and we give you only that, only what you first gave us. Verse 15. We are here for only a moment. Visitors and the strangers in the land as our ancestors were before us. Our days on earth are like a passing shadow, gone so soon without a trace. Verse 15 is most more important because of King David knew the um, uh, we are here on this earthly temporary. And um, uh, he also mentions uh, the days are gone fast. We're just passing through. And he focused on what he say is we are have for only a moment visitors and strangers in this earthly, uh, in the land as our ancestors were before us. And he said, our days on earth are like a passing shadow, gone so soon without a trace. So inner part of David knew that the Messiah, the Yeshua, that's why even he says in another passage in Psalm, says, O oh Lord, he, 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 he cried out, to, to, to the Savior and, and and you know the lineage of Judah the Messiah comes um, I want to go into the New Testament here in the Mark chapter 1 verse 40 and 45 and uh, this translation is uh, called J.B. Phillips New Testament uh, this is my cat here. Uh, J.B. Phillips, New Testament. Jesus cures leprosy. Verse 40. Mark chapter 1, verse 40. Then a leper came to Jesus, knelt in front of him, and appealed to him. If he want to, you can make me clean. Verse 41. Jesus was filled with the pity for him and stretched out his hand and placed it on the leper, saying, Of course, I want to be clean. And verse 42 and 44. At once the leprosy left him and he was quite clean. Jesus sent him away there and then with this strict injunction mind you saying nothing at all to anybody go straight off and show yourself to the priest and make the off, off offerings for your cleansing which moses prescribed as public proof of your recovery verse 45 continues but he went off and began to talk a great deal about it in public, spreading his story far and wide. Consequently, it became impossible for Jesus to show his face in the towns, and he had to stay outside in lonely places. Yet the people still came to him from all quarters. And another passage I want to read in the, um, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 12 to verse 20. In the New Living Translation, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 12 to verse 20. And uh, this is a uh, uh, subject of avoiding sexual sin. Verse 12, you say, I am allowed to do anything, but not everything is good for you. Even, and even 
so I am allowed to do anything. I must not become a slave to anything. Verse 13, you say food was made for the stomach and the stomach for food. This is true. So someday God will do away with both of them. But you can't say that our bodies, bodies were made for sexual immorality. They were made for the Lord, and the Lord cares about our bodies. Verse 14, And God will raise us from the dead by his power, just as he raised our Lord from the dead. Verse 15, Don't you realize that your bodies are actually part of Christ? Should a man take his body, which is part of Christ, and join it to a prostitute? Never. Verse 16. And don't you realize that if a man joins himself to a prostitute, he becomes one body with her? For the scripture says that two are united into one. Verse 17. But the person who is joined to the Lord is one spirit with him. But the person who is joined into the Lord is one spirit with him. Amen. Verse 18, run from sexual sin, sexual sin. No other sin so clearly affect the body as this one, but one does. For sexual immorality is a sin against your own body. Don't you realize that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit? who lives in you and was given to you by God. You do not belong to yourself. Verse 20, For God brought you with a high price, so you must honor God with your body. Amen. So uh, this passage, um, I reason I wanted to bring it out because of... Uh, because of, I want to give you a message today, and um, and the title is "Your Body is a Holy Temple," and uh, this main focus on the the scripture is is on First Corinthians chapter six, verse twelve to twenty, which I read already. Um, Okay, so let me let me go through um, the message I wanted to bring it to you. Okay, so this is gonna be a little while, but the, uh, you need the patient. Uh, let's pray, Heavenly Father. Thank you for the message that you brought, bring bring it to us, and this message is a living life. And Lord Jesus, I ask you to touch us, and change us, and we all depend on you. And Lord Jesus, I ask you to bless us and heal us from the sins of this world. Thank you for the message, I pray. In Jesus' name, amen. So, um, um, you know, the many are uh, struggled, the um, uh, sexual immorality, sexual sin. And this is a part of uh, nature we brought it in into this world that God, God spoken to, to, to Adam and Eve to be multiplied. So somewhere in our DNA, male and female, um, we are cleaving into the uh, flesh. That, 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 that only the sexual use of the, 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 the purpose is to multi, multiply our descendant. But, uh, if you take the wickedly, um, it, this becomes the, um, the sinful nature, and attack from the enemy. So that's why uh, this message is about. So let me start. Do you not know? Question mark. In the passage we read today, Paul repeat the phrase, "Do you not know?" It was something 
they should have known. What is it? Paul says. Do you not know? Paul says. Do you not know that your body is part of the body of Christ? In verse 15. Do you not know? Do you not know that your body is a temple in which the Holy Spirit, whom you have received from God, dwells, and that you are no longer your own? And what we need to know is that our body is a part of the body of Christ. It is also the temple where the Holy Spirit of God dwells. In short, it is about who you are, what kind of being are you, or to be more precise, who God sees us to be and who Christ sees us to be. We live our lives worrying about how others see us. We live our lives worrying about how other people see us. So we sometimes decide who we are based on what other people say or how they treat us. If we are praised, accepted, and treated well by others, we think we are valuable. On the other hand, if people treat you poorly and call you worthless, you think you are worthless. Such things can happen. However, it is not the words of others that determine what kind of being you are. It is the word of God. It is not how people see us, what they say, or how they treat us. Rather, it is about who God sees us as and who Christ sees us as. That's what the Corinthians should have known, of course, because the word of God has already been preached. They have to decide how they see themselves by the word of God not by the word of men, because how we see ourselves determines how we live, because how we see ourselves determines how we live. That is why Paul is reiterating, reiterating what Christians should naturally know. He is reminding us what kind of person are you. Your body is a part of the body of Christ. The first of these is that your body is a part of the body of Christ, Paul says. Do you not know that your body is a part of the body of Christ? Verse 15. Amen. Continue. Paul who is writing this, was also persecutor of the church. Not only was he persecuting the church in Jerusalem, but he was also trying to extend his persecution to Damascus. The situation is recorded in Acts chapter 9. Now, Saul, still eager to intimidate and kill the Lord's disciples, went to the high priest and asked for a letter for the synagogues of Damascus. He went to the high priest and asked for a letter to the synagogue in Damascus, in order that if we find, in order that if he find anyone who would follow this way, he might bind him, both men and women, and bring him to Jerusalem. Act chapter 9, verse 1 and 2. But it was on the way to Damascus that he met Christ. A light from heaven shone around him, and he was struck down to the earth. 
Then he heard a voice calling out to him, Saul, Saul, why are you here? Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? Paul asked the owner of the voice, Lord, who are you? Who are you, Lord? And the answer came, I am Jesus, Yeshua HaMashiach. I am Jesus whom you are persecuting. Amen. Continue. When Paul was persecuting was the church. It was individual Christians. But Christ said, I am Jesus whom you are persecuting. It was a persecution of Jesus himself, the suffering and the pain of each. Each persecuted person was Jesus' own suffering and pain. This is because the church is the body of Christ. It was the crucified and the resurrected Christ that Paul encountered. But to add more words, it was the resurrected Christ who was living in the church as his body. To be a part of body of Christ means that we are irreplaceable and precious to him. In other words, Christ needs us. We need Christ as our Savior. That, that goes without saying, but not only do we need Christ, but he needs us as his body. When I say that, some people may think, I can't do anything so I won't be needed by the church or by Jesus. But later on in the letter, Paul says, Paul says this, but later in the letter, Paul says, the eye does not say to the hand, I don't need you, nor the head to the foot, I don't need you. On the contrary, we need the part of the body that seems weaker than the rest. Verse 12, 21 to 22. This is the word essential, indispensable. Who can make us feel that way? Christ. Christ is the one who needs us. It doesn't matter if we think we are useful or not. It doesn't matter. Christ needs us. Christ needs us and Christ will use us. That is what it means to be part of the body of Christ. In today's Gospel reading, we read the story of Jesus healing a man with a serious skin disease. Mark chapter 1 verse 40 to 45. Jesus reached out his hand and touched the man. The hand did not heal the man. It was Jesus who healed the man, but without the body of the world, special, spe specifically without the hand. He could not have reached out and touched the man. Jesus needed hands at the time. We are those hands. We are the hands that Jesus needs in this world in order to touch people and bring salvation to them. That is us. It is our body. That is our life that we live with this body. That is why we need to take care of it. We must not treat us as if it were worthless. In today's passage, Paul spe specifically says, avoid immorality. He is talking about sexual immorality. Paul is not saying that we should stop doing this because it is immoral. Rather, he is talking about how important our bodies are to God 
unto Jesus because they are part of the body of Christ. It is the body of Jesus. It is the Jesus body. It is important. It is necessary. How can you do that? Don't you know that your body is a part of the body of Christ? We too need to know that we need to know that because how we see ourselves will determine how we live. Your body is a temple. And, and then Paul goes on to say, don't you know, do you not know, your body is a temple in which the Holy Spirit whom you have received from God dwells and you are no longer your own. Verse 19. Not only does he say that we are necessary bodies for Christ, but he even goes too far as to say that your bodies are temples. Continue. At that time this letter was written, there was still a temple in Jerusalem. This was before it was destroyed by the Romans. Once when Jesus and his disciples went up to Jerusalem, one of them saw the temple and cried out, Teacher, look! Look, teacher! What a wonderful stone! What a wonderful building! Mark chapter 13, verse 1. In 20 BC, King Herod the Great began restoring and enlarging the temple in Jerusalem, and it